What's up everybody? You're watching the Car Passion Channel and today I'm gonna show you how to get Stance Nation Hella Flush Ultimate Fitment on your Miata. Now in order to achieve this, you need a Miata and then you need to purposely buy wheels that don't fit your Miata. I'm also gonna be showing you some of the pro tips that I've learned over years and years of fender rolling several different cars and hopefully it'll help you guys out. Now what I have here is a fine specimen of a 1994 Mazda Miata that one of my subscribers has gracefully let me borrow for the day so I could roll his fenders. And he's sitting on some 15 by eight and a quarter plus zero wheels with 195 50R15 tires. Now, if your Miata has completely stock fenders, those, those won't fit, they, it just won't work. So what I'm gonna show you how to do is make it so they will work and you're gonna be breaking necks and you're gonna be ultimate camber god, master fitment expert of your neighborhood. Stay tuned. of information about buying the right size wheels for your Miata. If you want to run at a height like this that's a lot more functional, you don't want a 15 by 8 plus 0 or a similar size because you're going to get this massive tire poke like that and in my opinion that really doesn't look good. You want to get something like a 15 by 8 plus 20, something in that area and that'll sink that tread into the fender more. Now if you want to lower your car more and have a good stance, that's where you want the 15 by 8 plus 0. The owner of this car drove all the way from the Bay Area to bring me this, so it was at least an eight hour drive down. So he raised the car so he could drive it down on the aggressive offset wheels and without having any rubbing issues. But this gives me an opportunity to show you how much poke or AKA Mexipoke your car will have if you try to run at a high ride height with low offset wheels. And I think you're gonna find that the finished product on this thing is gonna look sweet. Let's get started. I'm gonna start by jacking up one side of the car and removing the wheels. First thing you want to do is clean out above the lip because you're going to be rolling this lip flat and you don't want that to get trapped. I'm going to make a cut right here on this fender lip and you'll really see why I do it later, but it's going to let this part of the lip roll completely up and not get caught at all. So that's about how you want it to look. You don't want to be able to see it from the outside of the car. But you want to go pretty much as deep as you can because if you try to roll this last bit of the fender right here, it won't want to roll up. And that's one of the major clearance issues that you'll have trying to fit aggressive offset wheels. So even though I'm not ready to roll yet, I'm gonna go ahead and get the roller ready. It goes on just like a wheel and then you throw a couple lug nuts on it. It doesn't have to be super tight, but you just want to make sure the roller stays snug against the hub. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just take this lip and try to roll it as flat as possible. Since the Miata has really thick rear fenders, you're not gonna be able to get it completely flat against the inside of the fender until you start to actually pull the fender out. And that's the difference between rolling your fenders and pulling your fenders. Rolling usually just refers to taking this lip and rolling it up flat against the inside of the fender, where pulling refers to actually pulling the metal of the fender and actually widening it out. Depending on how aggressive your wheel setup is, you might just need to roll that inside side lip and you're done. But if you're running a more aggressive setup, you will have to start pulling. Now in order to help the paint at the edge of the fender not crack when you're folding that inner lip up, you'll want to heat it up. A heat gun is best to use. I think you probably could use a blow dryer. I'm sure most of you have one um, in your car, but a heat gun really works better. You just have to be careful because this thing puts out a lot of heat. So the things you want to avoid are holding the, the heat gun too close to the paint and holding the heat gun in one spot because if you get the paint too hot, it will boil and burn. If you have original paint on your Miata, 20 plus years old, there is a chance the paint's gonna crack. It's just part of the risk you take. Since the rear fenders of the Miata are so thick, it will take a few minutes to get them heated up. I'm not sure exactly what temperature you wanna get it to. You should be able to, you know, hold your hand on there for maybe half a second or so. If it's really, really hot to the touch, you have a risk of burning the paint. But where a lot of people make mistakes is they try to go too fast and you have to realize that you're really just massaging the metal here and you have to go slow. Now what I mean by that is when you first start rolling, see the angle of the lip compared to the angle of the roller? You don't want that to be too aggressive. You wanna start pretty shallow like that and you're gonna roll the entire arch until the angle pretty much matches the roller and then you're gonna slowly increase the angle of the roller which will help massage the lip up. So the fender is nice and hot. We're ready to make our first pass. And for those of you that have never used a fender roller before, 
before. Basically this right here controls the tension on the roller wheel itself. So as you crank down this, it's gonna pull out farther and farther. And you don't wanna start with a lot of pressure at first. You just wanna kinda make a couple sweeps, go a little tighter, make a couple more, and you'll see that fender lift slowly getting worked up. Once the angle of the lip is pretty closely matched to the angle of the roller, you're ready to increase it a little bit. Now you can see you have a difference of angle again and you can start working the lip farther. You can see why I made this incision right here, is this lip is actually starting to fold flat. It's kind of hard to see, but we got a relatively flat roll on this lip here, and I'm sure it's gonna take more work than this to get the wheels to fit. Next thing I'm gonna do is remove this rear coilover, and what that will allow is I can throw a floor jack underneath the suspension arm, put the wheel on, and articulate the suspension as if the car was going through big dips and stuff like that, and I'll be able to find out where the tire is rubbing next and work on that area. And to remove the rear coilover, it's actually really simple. It's just one bolt on the bottom, two nuts on the top, and I'm gonna have an entire video dedicated just to installing and adjusting coilovers. You'll see that in the near future. With the tire actually installed, I can see the only problem area I have right now is just right here. After that lip is rolled flat, the next thing we're gonna do is start pulling. And that's basically taking the fender at its stock angle and pulling it outwards like this. You'll get more tire clearance, but the fender will still look pretty stock. You want the roller to pretty much match the angle of the fender. And as you go tighter and tighter, you'll actually see the fender moving as you make passes. You gotta keep that fender nice and hot when you're rolling to help protect the paint. Now we can tuck a lot more tire. It's just barely starting to rub in just this tiny area right here. And why I'm so focused on test fitting and test fitting and test fitting, I really don't like the way a car looks when the fenders are over rolled. Why am I gonna spend a bunch of time rolling up here and back here if it's not even rubbing? Then you just have wheel gap and I want this to be as tight of a fit as possible without having any rubbing issues. As you can see here, the roller is still pretty closely matched to the angle of the fender and so we're still pulling. Now if you wanted to put a flare on your fender, you would want to angle the roller more like this. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna actually flare out the edge of the fender. And I'll show you on my car because that's kind of what I did. You can see how flared out that fender is. And you can definitely gain some extra clearance by doing that. But with the setup on this white car, it's not really gonna be necessary. This is what you want to end up with. I have the suspension jacked up so it's fully bottomed out. And look at that, no rubbing. That means no matter what size dip or bump you hit, the tire is not gonna be rubbing on the fender. I hear so many people say they wanna put stiffer springs or raise their car because the tire's rubbing, but this is the right way to do it. You wanna make sure the fender clears, not just at your static ride height, but all the way through the suspension travel. Moving right along to the front, one thing that differs is you have a fender liner up here, and if you're fitting aggressive offset wheels and tires, most of the time you're gonna to have to either completely or partially remove this fender liner. You see what I'm talking about right here? It's that plastic liner. It's just held in with a few screws. The main reason people remove their fender liners is because this tab has gotta be either rolled up or removed. If you don't wanna remove your liner, what you can do is basically just make a cut like this with a razor. So you're just removing this part right here that would get hung up on the tire, but leaving the rest pretty much intact, protecting the harness up there and back here into the door jam. Now, if you drive the car regularly in the rain or especially the snow, rust might be a problem for you, so you might not want to remove the entire fender liner. Here's something you can do to get some more clearance, but leave the fender liner mostly intact. You can see there how much I removed. And yes, it is still going to throw water up there, obviously, but parts like back here where the wheel just throws up tons and tons of dirt and stuff, it's going to help protect that door jam. That's another thing you want to be concerned with is if you have wiring harnesses up here, usually you have to zip tie them pretty high to get the tire to not rub on them. The tire rubs through the harness, all of a sudden you got a headlight and a blinker that doesn't work. Oof, look at all that. Before you start rolling, you want to make that same relief cut in the front here that we made in the back. For most Miatas trying to get aggressive fitment, this tab area is usually a big problem and we're gonna have to cut that later. The next decision you have to make is whether or not you're gonna cut these tabs off. I personally like to cut them off because with the tab in place, it makes the structure of the lift different and it can make the outside of the fender have a weird uh, ridge in it or a bump in it after it's rolled. 
With the tabs removed, your fender lip is totally clear and you're ready to start rolling that lip flat. Now, the front fender is actually a lot thinner metal than the rear fender, so it will roll faster and easier, but you still wanna make sure to get it nice and hot and take your time. Most of the time people make a mistake when they're fender rolling, it's because they were rushing. It's really important to keep your roller adjusted properly throughout the process. Here's another thing to watch out for. You'll notice that as the roller goes through the travel, the wheel might be more tucked in than in some other areas. So you try to find a good balance of where to position this roller. One thing you have to be really careful of is if you have the roller up too high like this, you can actually crease the fender up here, the top of the roller It'll go past the polyurethane and crease the fender. It's a big bummer when you do it. Usually you're so focused on the lip right here, you don't realize how high the wheel is. On the flip side, if you have the roller too low and you move it up to a different part of the fender where it sinks down, it can actually pop out and it'll take the paint right off the fender on the bottom. These are all stupid mistakes that I have made myself. So I'm trying to put them into this video so you don't make any mistakes when you're rolling your fenders. Now we're ready for our first test fit and I'm sorry if the lighting in this video is crazy. I'm trying to film a shadowy wheel well on a white car and it's cloudy and then sunny every two minutes. It's like film skill level 100 and my skill level is like a three and a half. So I apologize for that. Hopefully you can see everything okay. Look at this, absolutely beautiful clearance when the wheels are pointed straight. And that's where the front has a new variable. We gotta check are the tires gonna rub in the car steering? And that's why it is so effective when you take out the front coil over it because you can simulate all driving scenarios. So now I'm gonna go ahead and steer the wheels and see if I can find where it's rubbing. So I've steered to the left and there's definitely some rubbing here. So I'll be able to flare this part of the fender a little bit more. Now you're usually not gonna be able to stop all the rubbing in this area, but that's okay because when the car is turning left, this side of the suspension is actually gonna be lifting, creating a lot of wheel gap. You won't have to worry about rubbing. But you do wanna make sure the fender has enough pull and enough flare to where when the tire does buzz this, it's not gonna do any damage. Now up at the front, with the wheels turned to the right, you can see the tread actually is catching the bumper tab. But it's not bad at all. It's only gonna require a little bit of grinding away and it's gonna clear just fine. Take care of this low hanging harness. I'll find one of the existing holes in the fender that leads through to the engine bay. Put a zip tie through it, wrap the harness around it, and then go back through. So on the other side, you'll just have both ends of the zip tie sticking through and it'll be looped around the harness. And then once you zip it, the head of the zip tie, that square part, won't be able to fit back through the fender hole and it'll hold the harness up in place. After you zip it, it'll look something like that on the engine bay side and like this on the wheel well side. Now the harness is held up really high and the tire won't be able to touch it or rub through it. So this trick is pretty Miata specific, but it demonstrates the kind of ingenuity you need to get good wheel fitment on any kind of car. You have this support right here that, that's actually supporting the fender and the bumper, but I'm having some tire clearance issues with this part right here, but I still wanna run this support. This is what you can do to retain the support. Go ahead and remove the bolt. Push the support up to the very front of the tab. You're gonna put the bolt back in and get it started. And then put that assembly at the very front of the tab. It's kinda of hard to see, but this was a complete triangle. Now you can see the very tip here is missing. I had to clip the tip off with the razor blade. And then I was able to use this bolt to pinch the support rod onto the front of the tab. And look at this, it still supports it like stock. I'm pulling on that pretty hard. It's not gonna go anywhere, but now I can cut this plastic bumper tab. Now, even with the suspension fully compressed, we've got full turn-in clearance on the fender itself. And the wheel turned in, the tire completely clears the tab, and that's just what we want. Now, keep in mind, when you have really aggressive front fitment, you have to avoid reversing through dips and over big bumps with the wheels turned, because what'll happen is you're turning the wheels back and out of a real steep driveway, the tire can grab the fender and suck it in, and it'll put a big crease in it, it'll mess the paint up, Super frustrating. Ask me how I know. I've done it to like three different cars. And you won't feel it in the car. When you're doing it and you're just destroying your fender, you probably won't feel it, you won't hear it. 
until the damage is done. You're like, how can I smell tire smoke? So when you go out of driveways and through dips and stuff, the suspension compresses a lot, the tire can contact the fender, and if the wheel is going in reverse, it can pull the fender in. After you get your clearances all dialed in, you're ready to put the coilovers back on, get the ride height set up just the way you like, and friggin' take that thing out on the town. You're ready to go break some necks. A lot of people ask me how long it takes to do these jobs and that can vary so much by experience and I'm not really that good of a person to ask because when I film doing a job it takes at least three times longer than normal so just to do these two fenders to give you an idea I'm about six hours in the other side is going to go a lot faster because I'm not going to be filming it but it just kind of gives you an idea I would definitely give yourself an entire day if you're rolling fenders especially for the first time. That is all I have for you today. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you like this video, drop a thumbs up on it. Let me know what you thought in the comment section below. And I will see you in the next one. Peace out.